Hello and welcome back to the Oric Talk Show. This week I'm having a lovely chat with Ola from All Things Money. We will be discussing how you can budget, save it and invest your money no matter what time of the year it is. Ola, thanks for coming on the show. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Not too bad. Um, just still like, adjusting to working from home and obviously we're still in lockdown. So yeah, just kind of just adjusting to it all. Lockdown vibes. Yeah, hopefully by the time this episode goes out, I think we should be out of lockdown, but we'll let fingers cross anyway. Let's not talk too soon. <laughs> yeah, God. but yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks for coming on anyway. And uh, yeah, so we'll just start by talking a bit about yourself and uh, what you do. So like your education background and like mm -hmm. in your Instagram as well. Yeah. Yeah, so um, literally we were just having this chat before. So I graduated from the University of Birmingham last summer, so <coughs> summer 2020, graduated, virtual graduation. Um, and yeah, I was, all my exams had finished. Well, actually I studied business management at UOB. And yeah, I was in lockdown and all my exams had been cancelled thanks to COVID. So I found myself in the middle of lockdown really, really bored. Um, and I just like um, taught myself then how to invest. So I was like managed to like get a grip so to how that like, investing worked and then I thought okay I'm starting to see a bit of like you know income coming in so I was like got some of my friends involved and I was like oh my gosh like guys like, you have to get involved in investing like it's so weird. it's an easy way of making money and I think within that first week I got like five of my friends investing and I was like okay if I've managed to get five people investing I was like why not create like a small like Instagram account that kind of teaches other people how to invest and more um, and yeah so as a result All Things Money was kind of born um, and yeah so from then I've created All Things Money as just a like financial platform teaching others how to budget save invest and everything in between. That is awesome. And you know what? Like just the fact that like you got five of your friends to sign up, that's class. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I had to. I was like, guys, I'm not being funny, but you're not doing anything with that. You're not doing anything by investing. You should have to put your money in said fund. Leave it there. And yeah, so I actually got five of them there and going. They regularly message me like, oh no, look, I'm like I gained like an extra hundred pounds, or or I like message my friend on payday just before Christmas, like, um, this is your morning reminder to invest in the stock market. So yeah, just getting the money as well. Like I feel like everyone should be able to have access to being able to invest. So yeah, I'm an advocate to helping other people doing the same. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, that's perfect. And you know, I think now more than ever, like young people like yourself are getting more into investing I've caught I've personally seen a bit of a shift um mm. and I think that's great because back when I was like you know from the ages of 18 to even 25 like I just thought to in, to be an investor you had to be working on Wall Street or you know yeah working mm -hmm. with these big corporate companies suit and tie but no you don't you literally have to open you know stocks and shares ISA mm -hmm. uh, deposit a certain amount a month into an index fund uh and have exposure to all, all these top performing companies and then just mm. that's it and then just let that ride yeah. for 30 40 years and you'll probably be a millionaire depending on how much you put in per month let no, and compare. exactly that exactly that and like you said it's funny you said like you like you like assume it's about wall street and all these like men in suits especially like being a woman myself and that is definitely the impression that has given off especially like from films and just like seeing i live in london personally and obviously a lot of the city banks are probably like, very male dominated so yeah i was very much like okay let's see if i can get so many like excellent people investing and yeah like you said you don't need whole book of knowledge you don't need to be a millionaire to invest literally I think I started with like a couple hundred first just to test the waters and then from there I've kind of grown a bit more into it but yeah like I think yeah it just needs investing generally just needs to be simplified and that's what I'm here to do yeah exactly and you know what just touched on that actually and uh um with Instagram, actually, and forgive me for being ignorant, I hadn't actually seen many female investors because you're right, I think it is quite stereotypical in the movies, etc. Mm, mm. And the majority of probably investment bankers that you do see are probably male dominant. But have you seen, um, whilst being on social media, seen more female investors now? Um, what would you say? So I've got like, I do have like a certain follow, like um, little community that I do follow. So I think a few of us do kind of follow each other. And there are a few female investors as the people I do follow. But I would say the majority of the people that are more vocal, like Ryan from Making Money Simple, and they are mainly male. And I'm not surprised. I think um, 
stereotypically men are probably more brash and more confident when it comes to wanting to invest in the stock market where us women are probably more reserved so I reckon that's where it comes into play as well when I think um stereotypically speaking women are probably more reluctant to invest their money because they don't want to lose it say god forbid they lost their spouse or something they want to be in a position where they are actually financially secure and they don't have um, potential risks being made on the stock market for example and um, so yeah I personally reckon that I do follow female investors but the majority of people that I speak to openly about investing is definitely more men yeah yeah I I agree but I uh, yeah I, def- I definitely agree from what I've seen as well um, mm. but yeah it's nice to see actually that there's a lot more vocal females c- coming about now mm. that I've that I've seen on on social media and uh, it's good to see a different variety of people getting involved and it, you know a matter of fact of all ages too like you know I've got a couple of um that are, are friends of mine that are property sources and they've got a property sourcing business and they invest in stocks and shares like individual stocks actually and they're 18 mm-hmm. years old at 18 yeah. I, I, I was probably wetting your pants in the club nightclub <laughs> yeah literally and it's funny you say that and like um me and one of my friends were talking about it so he was out of uniform and um, out of school from 16 and um I think we worked out so I think around 18 he started um, financing his own car so his first car was a BMW which was a really nice car and we worked out from then to now how much that money would be worth if he invested it in the stock market and it's painful. It is painful to see how much, like it was the equivalent of a house deposit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and again, and then it's just like saying, like just making information readily, readily available for people. Because he said, had he known you could, he that was an option at eighteen, would you have done gone for the BMW? Probably not. He probably would have involved invest it in the stock market. So that's why I think having these financial platforms on Instagram and social media such as like I'm now on TikTok making it so easily accessible makes it important and people are just becoming more aware of the fact that there are other ways of making money than having just a nine-to-five job there is yeah and um you know I truly believe that as of 20 as of 2020 I mean even before but especially as of 2020 we should Mm. not should not rely on one income anymore it's it's dangerous it's so risky Mm isn't it yeah 100 percent. you said that very well i think the whole last year has put some people into com- uh, complete financial chaos and i think a lot of people have started to realize the importance of having multiple streams of income um and also i think it's given people the spare time to actually sit and reflect on their financial situations i think especially with people that i know that are my age so i'm 23 and um, a lot of people between my age are starting their own side hustles their small businesses and i think they're realizing okay i've got all this spare time in my hands let's see what i can do even if it is just from painting pictures and selling those pictures pictures on etsy or i don't know i've got another friend that spreads positivity on instagram there's just so many creative ways to make money and to also just express your artistic flair and i think so many people have found that from and within themselves within the past year which i think is amazing too yeah i totally agree and i've said this many many times like well actually yeah uh since since lockdown the first one i think i've seen so many people on my on my facebook and instagram Mm. start start up you know little side businesses and stuff because they've had all this time started to make uh other revenue streams yeah and it's it's really good to see and and like there there is people that haven't done it but the people that have done it have done really well because we have they have a time on their hands and it's just really nice to see but like it's good because if they ever lost their full-time job um which is obviously a shame because a lot of people have and will probably lose their full-time job Mm -hmm. you know this year in 2021 then at least i've got that secondary income no matter how big or small it is it's still something isn't it oh yeah definitely i think that's the importance and i think whilst we also want to talk about saving as well today and um, the importance of having an emergency fund i think a lot of people are probably taking it back of how little they had saved up um and easy access savings to access during something like this and i think that's another thing that i made really clear before christmas that how important it is to have an emergency fund obviously if anyone watches or listens um an emergency fund is obviously a pot of money that is accessible um, for you if you are in like in a position where you've lost your job or you know you've like broken down or something like that you have that pot of money you know you can comfortably you can com- confidently access and um, should you need to and i think that's very important to have as well yeah i totally agree 
So let's get into the uh, the juicy stuff then. So budget, <laughs> <laughs> budgeting. Um, we'll let's start start talking about budgeting. So because like, you know I hear I've heard the phrase many times from like even like old friends of mine that say they don't know where they've spent the money. They get you know they get ten days into their their paycheck and they're like, where's my money gone? And they don't know. It's like it's like mm. it's almost like they've had money. And their their hands are transparent, and it's just got it slipped yeah, through it. Yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah, they can't yeah. they can't control money. And they're the type of people, right? That if the, if they was to win the lottery, the same thing would happen mm, because they haven't mm, been mm. financially educated. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And the word you said is they haven't been financially educated, which is why again I'm here. And um, but no budgeting. <laughs> I think that I think one thing I learned massively at uni how important it is to have a budget. So obviously, for example, I obviously went to university and my first amount, my first student loan instalment in first year was probably the biggest lump sum of money I've been given at one time. So I think I had a couple of grand, but I knew in my head that couple of grand and would have to last me from September to December. And that's when I really, really learned how important it is to have a set budget that, OK, it may be flexible at some times, but it's important to work out how much you need to spend on your rent and um, your food shopping and then any other extras you have left over is then to then enjoy afterwards because there's nothing worse than having all these parties and nights out and then you get to then be can't even afford food so yeah a budget is just crucial <laughs> yeah would you say because obviously you 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 realized pretty quickly that you've got a budget right so you know in uh, what mm. is it, six months or whatever um and no less what is september september to december what's that five six months i don't know three months <laughs> <Is it? laughs> oh, my god. oh my god i was way off all right and why i must be living in a different timeline <laughs> right so three months then right so you have you got three months to to budget right now so you came to realize that pretty quickly so did you still live on the noodle lifestyle of university or would you manage to live a bit more upmarket because of the fact you budgeted for it? Um, okay, so I was in between. It wasn't upmarket, but I wasn't noodles. So um, <laughs> to be fair, I was in version specific, particularly I was quite lazy when it came to food shopping anyway. So my weekly Aldi shop didn't really cost much. Mm. But I remember to make sure I stuck to my budget in first year, I was so rigid with this budget. Um, I would cash the amount that I could live off for the week. So for me in first year, I was like £50 a week. So I'd make sure, okay, I'd like make sure my budget for my food was set. And then after I paid for food, then obviously I couldn't enjoy the rest out for like nights out. Obviously, I was part of a sports team back then. So obviously I would be like spend my Wednesday social night tickets and like everything in between. At least I knew I had the money for. And then having it as cash definitely helped because by Sunday, if I saw I had like two pounds left and I knew that was two pounds left for the Sunday come Monday, then obviously I'd cash another 50. And um, that was how I budgeted the first year. It just worked perfectly because I could physically see how much I was spending. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome stuff. And did you like, how how did you actually budget then? Did you kind of write it down on a piece of paper? Did you have a, mm. a spreadsheet? Because like, you know, if you've got any tips for people that are looking to don't really know where to start, because like, you know, mm. okay, yeah, you've got your banking up there, but how do you, and there's lots of apps where you can keep track mm. of what you're spending. But for me personally, I have my own personal expenses excel calculator that i put everything into because obviously i have loads of different bank accounts so yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm, yeah it's funny you say that so i'm not an excel person no, i'm not now probably never will be and i think with people with budgeting will definitely overcomplicate what a budget is it's really not as overcomplicated or boring as people make it out to be so for me for example i had X amount of money in first year, so it was three months, I would take out how much I was going to spend on rent. So that was taken out, like rent and bills were gone. So whatever I was left with for as the remainder, I knew that was my bottom money for the three months I was there for semester one. And then also then I would calculate how many weeks there were in those three, I mean that in those three months, and then I would divide it, giving myself a weekly budget. So it was just a matter of taking out the necessities. And then working out and playing around whatever I had left. And um, so if that meant, okay, I only had 30 pounds, I knew, okay, 15, 20 pounds would be my food shop and the rest I could kind of try and enjoy like myself with. But obviously I was fortunate enough that I had around 50 pounds. Looking back on it, I don't know how I lived on 50 pound a week, but first year it worked somehow. But yeah, and I just did it on my, my phone. 
we write like write it out, use the calculator, and just put it in my notes page. So I knew every week, okay, I had fifty pounds to cash, and that's what I used. And then second and third year, are uh, and now I used ended up using Monzo, and I instead of cashing the money out, I would then just transfer said amount of money into a Monzo account instead, just because I was done with the cash. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, and you know, just to, just goes to show like that's how simple it can be just by using like notes mm. on your phone or whatever yeah 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 I'm not a fancy girl I've only just started using the diary so <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah no literally just the notes page on your phone just don't overcomplicate it yeah that's it just keeping things uh simple so um yeah spot on so with regards to so you got your budgeting and then mm-hmm. now saving then so I think budgeting is one aspect but saving people really struggle with now for me mm. I've always been a very good saver but like mm. it's only been the past year where I've been an investor but I've managed to say I've always been re- really good at say like I've always been like oh I'll save it for a rainy day but then as I said there's people that just they just physically and mentally are mm. unable when they've got money they just feel like they need to spend 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Tips on this? so yeah so for me I've just all, and I say this in every interview I have, all my friends will call me Thai or frugal or whatever, but I'm so fine with it because I've got savings. But it, you, life is all about balance because I can st- I still have a good time pre-lockdown. I wouldn't say I was stringent on my social life at all. Um, and I, yeah, I was still able to save. Um, at uni, I think for some people, if you do have uni um, listeners from university, a lot of people force themselves to try and get into this habit of saving. And I feel like, if you're a university student, I think the pressure is take it, take your mind off the fact that it needs to be a thousand pounds a month. Like I think you just need to start small, whether you're at university or in the job. If you don't know how to save, start small, even if that's five pound a week or if that's fifty pound a month, it's still something. And I think people are so always associate saving with such a large amount of money that they feel like it's impossible to ever save um, and especially where there's such a pressure on wanting to save for a house deposit and stuff people think oh I need to have 50 grand saved in two years no 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 no. <laughs> start with something small if you have a job set up a direct debit so if you want to try and save 50 pound a month set up a direct debit on your payday so you know 50 pound is coming out of your bank account you have no excuse then to even touch that money you can't see it so you know you've got 50 pounds set aside that you know you haven't touched because you've put you created a direct debit yeah that's all that, that's great advice and you know what like the way i tell people to do it is like even go as far as open up a separate a bank account that's earning decent interest right and as you said Mm. set up a direct debit and it will and it will pay into that bank account right and it almost treat it as a bill so it has to be paid mentally Mm -hmm. treat it as Mm -hmm. a bill and then just just forget about it don't even look at it forget about it no exactly that and then um having a separate bank account i'm an advocate for as well like you said obviously in an ideal world we'll have a high interest interest savings account which we don't currently have at the moment but even if you are still new to investing it's opening up a separate savings account is definitely step number one because you can't hopefully you don't get tempted to touch those savings and like you said treat it as a bill so you don't touch it um, and yeah I think again just start like, making it um, making it small and people not panicking that they don't have savings as well I think a lot of people especially my age are like oh I've just come out of university and have zero pounds that's not a problem that's not a problem at all what what matters the most that you're you want to start and I think once you start you get into a habit and you'll be like oh it's so much easier than I thought it was and I think that's important as well really is and it's a great habit to uh to get used to early on than Mm. you know later in life which is you know if you do get into a habit later in life it's better than better late than never um, yeah exactly but yeah like totally agree and uh yeah with regards to savings account as well like i definitely think because i I, <clears throat> I stress about the differences between cash ices and stocks and shares ices and i know stocks and shares mm-hmm. ices have a, a risk element to them but they're actually not that risky if you're in it for the long term and you are mm-hmm. if you're trying to if you let's say since you're 18 and you want a house by the age of 30 then i believe a stocks and shares ISA could well do that like mm. it is risky, but like it, you you can mitigate the risk by putting it in lower risk assets, can't you? Yeah, a hundred percent. So exactly like you said, I think if you're investing for the long term, okay, there's an element of risk, and obviously I'm not a financial advisor, but 
the element of risk that you have is so diminished when you're wanting to invest for the long run and you're also investing in stuff that are in a diversified portfolio, whether that's an ETF or it's in a fund. Mm-hmm. Um, there's definitely ways you can definitely minimise that risk. And I think um, another, people, another thing that puts people off investing is that, OK, people say it's risky and everyone's like, oh, there's risk, like, I can't lose all my money. OK. Realistically speaking, if you're planning to invest for 10 to 15 years, you probably will not lose all of your money. And I think people need to change that kind of mindset mm-hmm. as well. Um, especially when I started investing, that was when there was, there was a massive drop in the stock market. So that was like me and my friend were like, okay, invest, 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 like pull yeah. your money in. Um, which worked very well for us. And obviously some people were like, oh my gosh, like throwing their papers in the air, like I've lost all my money. But okay, we've had one dip, recovered very quickly. And yet even for the next 10 years, it will still only go up hypothetically speaking so yeah yeah and it's like it's about riding out there will be dips there'll be more dips of course Mm -hmm. that's just like there's been a dip probably every 10 years there was a big crash in the 80s there was a crash in the mid 2000s there was a crash Mm -hmm. last year you know but this is like this is what it's what's going to happen there'll be a crash in 10 years time um but you you know as i said if you're in it for like 30 plus years you're going to ride it out. And that's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. You're going to yeah, ride it exactly out. That. And in, or just for anyone listening, index funds and funds, ETFs that track, um, you know, the, the big like S, the S&Ps and the, the FTSEs, they're designed to go up because they are the top performing companies, aren't they? That's, yeah, that's no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Spot on. But um, so, yeah, let's move on to investing then. So, I would say that with there's a difference in between investing in index funds and individual funds, uh, individual uh, stocks and shares. So do you invest mm-hmm. in both personally or just in index? Yeah, so I'm quite extra. I think <laughs> people start to realise, especially after before Christmas, I hosted a QA and a and I told people I had nine different accounts. Um, so I'm very extra with my money. So when it comes to investing, I have three different accounts. So I have a lifetime ISA, which is investing in the stock market. I have a stocks and shares ISA. And then I just have a separate account that I use just to trade individual stocks, um, just to kind of play the market. So my main ETF and funds are in my stocks and shares and my lifetime asset and then the individual stocks are invested in trading 212 so I have a couple of like 50 60 pound stocks held in different companies just to kind of play around because I know say for example if one of them went bust I'm not going to cry but I'm not personally going to cry over 50 pounds if I lost lost it so that's why I've kind of opened up a separate account there just to kind of play around there because I don't think I could I'm like brave enough to invest like a grand and a half in like Tesla just yet yeah 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 no um and that, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I've got like three different stocks and shares, individual stocks and shares accounts opened up. Um, mm. Like trading two and two is a great one because it's obviously commission free. Um, mm. Free trades, another awesome one to use free trade. No, I don't personally, but I have heard of it. Free trade. Yeah, that's 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 another brilliant one. Um, yeah. Hargreaves lands down, but they're really expensive. They're reputable, yeah. but they're really yeah. expensive. It's like I, I bought some shares in a mining company and it was like £11.95 for the trade. Oh, really? I thought um, AJ Bell was quite expensive because my lifetime I see is with AJ Bell. It is. Um, um, but yeah, no, it's not. I know um, speaking about Hargreaves London, they're definitely the like, most expensive on the, um, on the internet. But I feel like people, a lot of my audience are very scared towards that because they feel like, especially because I steer them towards money, the money saving expert website and they love the fact that it's reputable. And I think that definitely um, works in Harvey Blands down to fame and the fact that loads of people like see them as very reputable investing platform. Um, but yeah, no, I don't personally use HL myself. Yeah, I, I probably, I'm not sure if I'll use them again, but the only problem is sometimes like, I've never, like years, I don't know if they, it will happen now, but like years ago, um, there was when companies had like a, an IPO, they would only appear on Hargreaves Lansdowne or AJ Bell. And um, oh, really? Yeah, like they wouldn't appear on like Trading 212 because it's like exclusivity mm. or something like that. But I think, yeah, like with um, Airbnb this year, um, or no, last and back in the last year, wasn't it? Airbnb yeah. when they came on, like, yeah, they was on all the, all the platforms. Oh, yeah, I was ready there on Trading 212, got my Airbnb shares. <laughs> Did you get one? <laughs> yeah, 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 I got a couple. I was well annoyed at that because it was, I think when I checked the uh, the 
the IPO stock price was going to be like $68. But mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was just for like, that was what, you know, investors were going to get before it actually got traded. And then mm-hmm. as soon as it went on the stock market, shot up to like $120. I was yeah, like, a lot, a lot. <laughs> oh my God. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, nah. I, I, so I didn't buy one in the end. I, I'll put my money somewhere else. I, <laughs> money. I think I put my money in Neo instead. Electric car. Oh, I've got a bit of Neo. I've got a bit of Neo. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's done pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Cool. So, yeah, have you got any tips for investing then for like beginners that literally don't have a clue? Mm-hmm. So, tip number one make sure you have savings first. Like I don't, I wouldn't recommend anyone putting anything on the stock market unless they have at least some savings that they can easily access. Again, say if we went into another pandemic, the last thing you want is all your money invested in the stock market. My personal opinion is to have savings first. Um, tip number two, open up a stocks and shares ISA. That is literally your best friend because obviously we don't want to be paying the tax man for any of our money that we're making. Um, and tip three, again, start small. I think for a lot of beginners, again, they may think you need to be a millionaire to invest. I think even if you just have a simple five, 10 pounds, especially if you're using platforms that are free, like free trade and trading 212, try it out. Try maybe 10 pounds on, not financial advice, but 10 pounds on Tesla. See what it looks like to even look at a stock market graph. You see what it looks like and then maybe think, okay, I'm a bit, I'm a bit more com- comfortable. Let me see, you know, what else I can invest in. And I think research is very important and um, research about the different types of um, investments you can make. So you've got your funds, you've got your ETFs, you've got your individual stocks and shares. What are you comfortable in investing? Do you want to be a bit risky and, p- and put money in an in individual stock or do you want to, you know, just play it a little bit safer and have a d- more diversified portfolio? I think once you understand those kind of terms, that's when you're probably a bit more ready to invest in because you'll obviously you would feel a bit more clued up about what a, like an ETF even is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spot on, spot on. Love that. And what one final note on, on that side of things where when it comes to individual stocks, I'd always advise people to not listen to their friends unless their friend is, is a financial advisor because yeah, I've made that mistake in past in the past before I knew what I was doing. You know, my friend was like, oh, I invest in this company because they're doing this, this, this. And I just went off the back of their advice. And of course, what happened? Like the stock went down and it hasn't gone back up. Um, and that was like over a year ago. Um, that's but, interesting. Like, you do say that. That's a very good point. And I think that's, I think you probably are as well. But myself, on all things money, I'm very careful about the information I share when it comes to investing. Because the last thing I want to do is tell someone to invest in a said like an like X amount fund or in a specific ETF, and then they go and lose their money. I'm not there to be a financial advisor. I'm just there to educate, and I think that's very important as well. Like like you said, not take advice from just anyone off the internet or your friends, and make sure you do your own research so you understand what the risks are. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, if you really want to get even more technical then um, learn how to read a financial uh, financial statement as well. Yeah, no, like, exactly. Yeah, look at the companies, well, what the mm-hmm. actual company's worth, et cetera. Well, that's, that's yeah. a bit more advanced, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, definitely. Excellent. So um, book recommendations. Um, you've, uh, I'm guessing you read a lot, quite a lot of books to educate yourself or, you know, watch a lot of videos um, mm-hmm. on, on investing and money in general. So if you've got some, what are your top, top top three three books, would you say? Oh, top three. Oh, that's a hard one. Okay, put on the spot. Okay, number <laughs> one, um, Money a User's Guide. That was by Laura Waitley. She is one of the reasons why I even started All Things Money because me coming from a business management background and, after, and reading her book, I was like, oh my goodness, I literally did not know half of this. And that was when I was really shocked at, okay, I'm from a business management background and let alone what other people don't know. I was like, this is so wrong. I was like, people need to be educated. And if I can make that education a bit more easy, like easy and easily accessible, then yeah, I'd want to do it. So yeah, Money User's Guide by Laura Waitley. Another one for my women, um, um, Smart Women Get Rich by David Bash is a really, really good book as well. Men can read it. It's all about making sure you're financially independent for yourself. And um, love that book. It's Ameri- it is by an American, but it's de- definitely applicable for people in the UK. And lastly, I'm going to be biased and um, my own ebook. <laughs> I was waiting <laughs> um, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah I've got um, I've launched my own ebook which is just like a little handbook that kind of has 
all literally covers all the basics, including like everything we really talked about today. So budgeting, saving, investing, mortgages, pensions, and taxes. So yeah, that is my third recommendation. <laughs> yeah, also, and I, well, you know what? My my next question was going to be actually about your ebook. Um, have you got more than one ebook out? You've got some resources, haven't you? On your yeah, so I've got I've got a couple. So I've got the ha- um, the handbook is like the number one baby that was a lot of sweat and tears and like yeah that was just a a story in it half but yeah the handbook and then I've got the investing guide so that's just kind of like a little snippet from the handbook for anyone that just wants to slowly learn about the um, investing Um, and then I also have what I launched a couple of weeks ago now and the workbook so it's just kind of um, a step-by-step guide to kind of help people learn how to budget and save and obviously I've got a little bit on investing as well so like include a little checklist and what are the barriers to people investing just creating little resources on how they can in, enhance their knowledge before they step into the world of investing so yeah those are my three ebooks and then I also have a financial planner so that's just like your savings tracker your budget planner and everything in between oh awesome yeah I did I did check them out so like I've seen them on a on Instagram and yeah there's some very good resources there and uh, have you done have you done pretty well um getting those out there have, have, have you had like some good good feedback yeah I think the main one that's been like grabbed very quickly since Christmas was the investing guide and um, the handbook's been doing really well since it launched in September but where I recently launched the investing guide as just its own book a lot of people are literally grabbing them up and I think it's again because we have so much time and um, to finally read like sit down and read about investing what it is because I think it's been discussed a lot on Twitter and Facebook especially with like bitcoin going up at the moment people are probably wondering what is bitcoin like oh, i want to get in i want to get in on a join so yeah i think that one is definitely one that people are loving at the moment so yeah oh yeah and you know what you've just said uh bitcoin so let's briefly talk about that one do you do you hold any any sort of cryptocurrency a little bit a little yeah. bit <laughs> i did it so i'm really annoyed with myself and i think a lot of people are as well but when i was doing during my placement year so i just read about read law Waitley's book and mum had opened a Coinbase account and she was telling me about um, Bitcoin and obviously where you get so many scam emails every day about Bitcoin. I was a bit sceptical about if it's even real or whatever. So I think that I think I invested like hundred pounds at the time. I was like, I don't know what I don't have any more than that to lose in case it's fake or whatever. And obviously where it's gone up so much now, it's worth 500 pounds. So Keeping myself, I didn't invest anymore, but yeah, oh, that's yeah. the little cryptocurrency that I do hold. I don't hold much more than that, but yeah, I think I do need to like do a bit more research in that kind of field myself. What about you? Yeah, so I own um, I, about $100 in Bitcoin and about the same in Ethereum. Oh, yeah. I, want, I wanted some exposure with both of them because like they're the top mm-hmm. performing ones. Um yeah and again i want to diversify my investment portfolio because uh yeah i've I've got stocks and shares and um some commodities and um yeah i just wanted to some exposure in there and Mm. i thought what i'll do is i'll buy bitcoin like using the dollar cost averaging method yep and buy a bit you know every now and again because if there is a dip i'll buy if it goes high i'll still buy like yeah, yeah and i like that and that's my method of investing personally and um, again if anyone doesn't know what that method is but it's basically where you kind of set up essentially a direct debit of a set amount every month so depending on how well the stock market is you literally still buy purchase a set amount of money worth of stocks or shares so you kind of just fluctuate again with the market you ride out those averages hopefully and have an average of like worth of the stock market if that makes sense <laughs> yeah no that makes sense basically it's, it's instead of putting you got a thousand pounds to invest in microsoft and you want to buy microsoft at a thousand pounds don't put a thousand pounds in in one go put it in throughout the course of the year 12 times and then yeah you, incrementally you have, yeah yeah and you could well it can go obviously one of two ways you could be down a little bit if it stays high or if it has a dip and you invest in it when it dips a few times throughout the year and then it goes back up at the end of the year and it stays high you could have essentially have mm. made made money doing that yeah and that's my favorite way of investing because like i see everywhere you cannot time the market there's no perfect time to invest you never know when there's going to be like troughs or peaks you literally just never know so that's why again i think that's a really good way of investing myself personally and then also you know leaving it yeah. for the long game 
and it's yeah exactly the long game and that's that's uh that's kind of my, one of my mottos uh yeah play the long game and you know what you said about time in the stock market and uh timmy from uh mr money jar um he made a comment on his he's what on one of the previous episodes and he, he made a comment saying anyone who says they can predict the stock market ask them for next week lottery's numbers <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. so yeah it's, it's, it's so true um Cool. So let's hear then your top three tips um, on money for 2021. Oh, for 2021. Yeah, what what would you do? So number one, I know we're towards the end of January now. However, set financial goals. I think it's really important that now that we've entered the new year, you reflect on the last year and look at what you've mistakes you've made financially. What can you adjust and set yourself a goal? Even if it's just one goal of, okay, I want to save £500 this year. It doesn't have to be massive, but just make sure you set yourself a smart goal that's, you know, achievable and realistic. Um, Number two, make sure you have that emergency fund. Again, doesn't matter how much it is, but like we said the last year, I think we've all learned how important it is to have just some money set aside. Even if you bust a tire like next week, you know you've got 50 pounds to repair it. And number three, to have multiple streams of income. Don't rely on that one nine to five job that you may not potentially have in three months time. I think it's really important to have multiple streams of income. And even if that second um, stream of income is just from selling clothes on ebay it really doesn't have to be difficult i think that is definitely my third tip awesome yeah top tips yeah couldn't agree more with them all perfect thank you (laughs) thank Um, you very much yeah yeah so yeah if you are listening to this then throughout the course of the year march april may june july whatever um then yeah that will be relevant throughout the whole year as well like yeah Mm. it's basically i always say to people like, you know, when's the best time to invest? And they always say to me, when's the best time to invest? And I always say yesterday, like you could start. Honestly, it's so yeah, true. Which means today really, but like, you know, it's never, it's not too late to invest. It's not like mm. people thought, like I've seen, just going back to quickly, going back to Bitcoin, I've seen people on my Facebook saying, oh, I wish I'd invested uh, back in 2017 or wish I'd invested when it dipped in December or when, whenever it was July, yeah. I'm like invest now. Like crypt, you know, Bitcoin. Yeah, it may it might dip again or it might rock it up to a hundred grand. Like that's what the predictions are, whether or not mm, that will mm. happen. But if you get in now at twenty five k or whatever it was at the time I said it, you're still going to make money. Yeah, exactly. So stop crying about it and and just invest, just invest. invest, and yeah. that's what yeah invest now i think that's one thing once you've done your research again not a financial advisor but once you've done your research do you feel confident invest now like there's no point waiting around because the money you're losing just from sitting around doing nothing is just ridiculous so yeah (laughs) exactly and you know your money sitting in the bank is actually devaluing and it's becoming more useless every single day so yeah just keep mm. that one and that that's a whole another story that one but uh <laughs> give that a Google little thing called inflation <laughs> yeah uh, yeah awesome so right this brings us just to the final part of the show wh- where I ask three random questions um oh gosh okay yeah <laughs> you know what? everyone always panics at this bit They're like oh I gotta do repair but no, it's a uh, fear not. It's only a um, bit of fun. But uh, question one is, what is your favourite movie? Oh, that is so good because it's so relevant right now. Um, I don't know if anyone <laughs> who's listening has watched it, but Soul on Disney Plus has become my favourite film ever. I've watched it four times. <laughs> I watched it last night for the first time. Did you? What do you think of it? Oh, 10 out of 10. It's brilliant loved it I think I watched it the first time not expecting what it was going to be all about so I watched it a second time and I was like oh. and then I watched it a third and a fourth and I love it now it's my favorite it's definitely one of my favorite and okay a second one as well a second favorite Shawshank, okay. Shawshank Redemption oh, we've had that on the show that is the another beautiful beautiful film so yeah <laughs> yeah quality what's the um oh god I can't remember the guy's name in uh, Soul now. He's the annoying Australian guy who is, goes on the hunt. Oh, what, Terry. Terry? Terry, yeah. Terry's there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yep. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Lo- love that film, yeah. Uh, great film. And second question is, what is your favourite 
destination that you've been to? Australia, only because I was meant to move there. I'm still stuck in England, but yeah, Australia definitely, definitely blew me away. So yeah, went to visited Melbourne and Sydney and one of the best holidays I've ever been to. So much that I want to move and live there. Oh, so, yeah. I, I don't blame you. Where would you want to live though in Australia? So I had plans to move to Melbourne. So I actually had a one-way ticket booked for last September and um, the day I launched my ebook. And yeah, so I was literally ready to move and COVID said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm, I'm gutted for you. you know what melbourne melbourne's the place if i was to move anywhere on this planet i'd live in melbourne for the rest of my mm, life mm. have you been before i lived there for nearly two years oh so yeah. jealous yeah so jealous. it's it's one of the best you know what though it has british weather in terms of it does uh, it does winter times winter times mm, but mm. the heat the heat's amazing but um yeah winter it does get cold it's yeah. cold yeah yeah, believe I went it or not, in September everyone. and it was really cold in Melbourne because I was staying in Sydney, flew down to Melbourne. I was like, this weather contrast is not a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I only had a Ooh. denim jacket and that was not OK in September. I thought I'd be all right with a denim jacket in Melbourne, but no. Oh, I know. I, I, I arrived in Melbourne in my shorts. I was like, oh, it's freezing. <laughs> this isn't Australia. I've landed back in Birmingham. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, awesome. All right, question three. Name something that grinds your gears. Oh, grinds my gears. <laughs> oh, that's a really hard one. Um, What's the first thing that comes to your head when what something gets on your nerves? Honestly, I'm blank. I'm blank. <laughs> Does nothing piss you off? <laughs> well, I mean, I could say my sister, but it wouldn't be very nice. Um, <laughs> let me think. <laughs> Only because we're on the topic of fi personal finance. The one thing that annoys me is when people tell me they're, they're too poor to invest. And I think, obviously, certain personal circumstances, I completely understand. And obviously... That is quite a controversial one. But I mean, in terms of the people that are splurging money on a regular basis and they come to me and they say they don't have money to invest. Mm. Those are the people I mean. And with the fact that, OK, you spent £150 because I do a money confession, um, Sunday money confession series on my story every Sunday where people share with me their like recent splurges and stuff. And people tell me they spend like up to £1,000 on trainers, £200 on ASOS. 50 pound on like a water bottle the other day and I'm just like you're oh. telling me you, yeah you can't you can't you're too poor to invest but you're spending that kind of money those are the people I'm talking about and that's one thing that grinds my gears because I'm like you have the money that's like 50 pounds that's like 10 pound a week you can invest in a stock um so yeah that's one thing that grinds my gears you know what? <laughs> the people that buy that 50 pound water bottle fall into the same category as people that buy um fresh air in a can Honestly, there's a, there's a whole range of stuff. And I, you know what? I love it because people openly <laughs> share them with me, but I am blown away. I've got one that um, someone spent 80 pounds on a jar of sweets before. Oh um, and yeah, you got, you got, you got it all. You've got it all on there. <laughs> it just goes to show that some people have too much money out there that they're just being silly with it. Mm, I had another confession that someone bins their pennies. They don't like to keep their pennies. They just bin them. Oh, but you know what? Just quickly going back to um, our, our saving uh, tips. One thing that I do and I've started doing for a year now is I bought by a money box where I, I can't get into it. So it's one that you mm -hmm. have to use a can opener and any change. I, so if I go to the petrol station and I put in 20 quid, if I get back, if I buy chewing gum at a petrol station, for instance, and it's like a pound and I get back 19 pound in coins, them mm. coins are going in that jar. That's yeah, a rule. Yeah. Any coin, I love that. even if it's if I get fifty pound back in coins, it's got to go in the jar. It's like a rule of mine. I'll, I'll never get fifty pound probably in coins because I mainly use my card. But you know, <laughs> just hypothetically, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then at the end of the year, I open it, and then that's I can do what I want with that money. But for me, that's investable income. 
Yeah, that's very interesting because someone on Instagram um, under the name of Chloe's Guild Club, she also did a penny saving challenge as well. And I definitely think that's something I could probably do because I always lose my coins because I don't really carry a purse. I'm so used to Apple mm. Pay. Yeah. Um, that is definitely a very good idea. So I'm definitely going to use that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Get get yourself a jar of eBay or whatever with a, mm -hmm. with a closed off one. And just write the date on it and then write the date for next year. So, I don't know, January 24th, 2022. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah, that'll be there and it's exciting because you get to count it yeah no I'm, I'm such a good day. I'm definitely going to do that now so yeah excellent cool right so finally then how can people um, get in touch with you um, perfect so or I am on all the socials at the moment <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with all of them so I'm on Instagram at all things money underscore same with my Twitter and my TikTok account. I'm now on TikTok, so feel free to go give me a follow on there. Um, I'm also on Facebook, All Things Money. And if anyone ever fancies just dropping me an email, I'm very, I'm always on my emails. And um, so I'm there, contact, contactable at allthingsmoney underscore at hotmail.com. And lastly, I have a website. If you do want to access any of my books that we mentioned earlier in the talk, um, my website is www.allthingsmoney.uk spot on there you go there you have it folks yeah yeah lovely well you've been an amazing guest and some absolute value has been spread here for anybody of all ages all sizes yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. thank you thank yeah. you for having me yeah you're very welcome um so yeah get your um investing goals in shape for uh, 2021 no matter when you listen to mm -hmm. this or 2022 yep. or whenever you listen yeah yep. literally <laughs> whenever now's now now's the chance to start yeah. so whenever you listen to it it's now invest <laughs> yesterday yeah exactly <laughs> awesome all right that has been the all right talk show we'll be back next week with another awesome guest ciao for now <laughs>